Most of you now have heard the story. UConn and the Big 12 are talking about the Huskies potentially joining the conference. Brett Yormark is pushing for this move to happen. But is Brett Yormark making a major mistake and taking the Big 12 in the wrong direction? We're going to talk about that right after this word from my channel sponsor. Since 1931, the attorneys at Katz, Cantor, Stone Street, and Buckner have been the voice for victims who have suffered serious injury or death. They have a fierce passion for truth and justice and a sincere compassion for those who have been wronged by others. Whether you have been in a car accident or fighting with an insurance company or you or a loved one has suffered serious injury or death due to medical negligence, we will ensure your voice is heard loud and clear. Katz, Cantor, Stone Street, and Buckner will ensure there is justice for all West Virginians because we are your lawyer. Your voice. Visit us at yourlawyeryourvoice.com. What is up? Welcome in. Come in to Coos's Corner. Make yourself comfortable. Bell yourself up to the bar. And let me pour you out a shot of top shelf college football content. On tap in today's episode, we are talking about the Yukon Huskies potentially joining the Big 12. And in addition to that, I want to talk a little bit about the direction Brett Yormark appears to be taking this conference. And although we, most of us, myself included, have been singing the praises of Brett Yormark since day one and how we love his aggressive style and his, uh, you know, his business acumen and how he's being, you know, aggressive and all this, we agree with most of the moves he's made and most of the moves have been good for the league. Is it possible he's going too far and pushing the league in the wrong direction? And that's what I want to talk about in the show today. Not not meaning this as a shot at Brett Yormark, but I just think we it's as Big 12 fans, we need to be objective. And I think we need to look at both sides of the coin, right? We need to look at all possibilities here, not just continue, continuously singing praises and complimenting everything that's going on and yada, yada, yada. We need to be objective here. And I wanted to do that in this video. And as I read more and more and hear more and more podcasters and, and whatnot talking about this Yukon move, I'm thinking more about this. There's a couple articles I'm going to use as sources today in this video. I'm not going to show you articles in this case. I'm just going to go over some highlights, some bullet points from each one, and, and some a couple quotes from each one that I think that stood out to me that I want to bring to you and, and get your thoughts on it in the comments section. But the first article is one from Dennis Dodd at CBS Sports. I will leave a link to the article so you can go read the whole thing. But a couple bullet points I wanted to talk about specifically. The first one, in the article, Dennis talked about how when Brett Yormark made his presentation to the Big 12 presidents on Monday, Dennis's, and they left without a vote, by the way, which they weren't expecting to, to vote. They just wanted to hear the presentation. And and by the way, Endeavor was also part of that meeting. Who's We all know Endeavor is, is the consulting firm that Brett Yormark and the Big 12 use. But in that presentation, according to Dennis, according to Dennis's sources, six of the 16 Big 12 presidents are in favor of adding UConn. Now, in order for the, the for it to pass, they need to have a supermajority and at least 12 of the 16 presidents have to vote in favor of it. Right now, according to Dennis's sources, there are six. There are two presidents who were apparently dead set against adding UConn. So that means there are eight presidents who were undecided and could be swayed one way or the other. Now, you have to get six of those eight on board with this in order to make it work. Because if you don't get at least six, then you have too many no votes to squash it. So that's, I want, I want us all to keep that in mind as we think about this, right? So there's been no decision made. And, and one source that Dennis got a quote from said, nothing was even remotely close to being decided, end quote. So they're they're not close to making a vote. So there are some out there saying they're uh, uh, Mike Zanetto or Mark Zanetto. I'm, I think it's Mark. Anyway, from over at Locked On UConn, the one who originally broke this story last a week ago today. Actually, his sources told him it was pretty much imminent. But according to the sources Dennis has, that may not be the case. We'll see where it ends up at the end of the day. Uh, none of us know anything. We're just going by what we're hearing and reading, right? But it looks like they're still a long way away from this actually becoming, uh, before this coming to fruition and UConn actually joining the Big 12. In Dennis's article, he also talked about how, according to his sources, Fox is against the move, and it's obvious why. Fox currently has the Big East basketball media deal. 
So why would they want to lose UConn from that deal? They have 100% of that deal, is my understanding, or at least the majority of it. But why would they want their top brand to walk away? And by the way, it's a deal they just got signed recently, within the last month or so, is my understanding. So they obviously don't want to lose that. Now, yes, Fox is involved in the Big 12, but they hold a minority stake in that deal. ESPN is a primary rights holder, so they would not get, it's my understanding, they would not get first dibs on, on games, ESPN Woods, which means they could lose out on a lot of, on some UConn content here. So it's, it makes sense that Fox will be against it. However, according to Dennis's sources, ESPN supports the move. And again, it's, it's obvious why they're going to get UConn basketball and they, you know, they probably want UConn basketball. Now how much they're willing to pay for it. That's the big question. Is it enough to make it worthwhile for the big 12 to bring them in? Does it actually add value to the league? especially since they're not going to be bringing their football school or their, I'm sorry, their football team until 2031, according to the media sources out there. The move would be they would bring their basketball and maybe even Olympic sports over to the Big 12 as early as 2026, but and that would give them a six-year uh, walkway, basically, to a six-year runway to get their football program up to snuff where they can be competitive in the Big 12. That's the original plan, at least from what's been, been leaked to the media. Is basketball alone enough to move the needle here? That's what that's what these Big 12 presidents have to decide. And I, I mentioned it ever earlier. Endeavor, according to Dennis's sources, they are also in favor of this move. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because they, they may get paid more if UConn gets into the Big 12. I, I don't know how, the, obviously, I don't know how their agreement has worked out with the Big 12 or with UConn or whoever. Obviously, it would make sense for Endeavor if they make this move happen. It makes them look good. So, uh, you know, there's not only reputation, but maybe also even some financial gain for them with this. Who knows? Again, it all depends on how the Endeavor agreement is written with the Big 12. All right. Now, there's another article. There's another article that was written that had a couple quotes couple paragraphs I want to talk about. This is written by Ralph Russo over at the Associated Press, and it says, the first paragraph I want to focus on, it says, the paint has not even dried on your Mark's last renovation project, and he is calling for the contractors again. Basically, what Ralph is talking about in this article is, hey, not only should we be asking why the Big 12 is wanting to add UConn, but why now? They haven't even started the new four corner schools have not even played their first game as members of the big 12 yet the first football game yet your markers already had here trying to expand again they're just one year removed from adding the the, the four you know ucf houston cincinnati byu they're just now adding utah colorado arizona arizona state trying to get that integration up and running and, and going smoothly and he's already wanting to add more schools. Is he moving too fast here? That's kind of what Ralph Russo was alluding to in this in his article, and I'll leave a link to that as well. Is Brett Yormark moving way too fast in this in this landscape of college sports? With you got the house settlement coming down the pipeline, you've got transfer portal craziness. You've got uh, you know schools going to have to start paying revenue sharing to their athletes about twenty to twenty three million a year. You have potential uh, athlete employment coming down the pipeline. I mean, there's just so much the T's athletic departments are having to look at, is it really the right time to add a, a school, especially one that doesn't even have a, a competitive football program at the moment? UConn, according to reports, are having to get like 40 to $45 million in, in subsidies from their university just to survive. The athletic department does. Is that really something you want to bring into the league? And that's the fair questions Ralph Russo is asking here. And then this, and, and he's got a fair point. Is your mark pushing too fast, too hard? in today's landscape before they even get a chance to wrap their arms around what they have to do now. And also if they add UConn, will that prevent them from getting an ACC school here down the, down the line when the ACC potentially implodes, if it does all, all fair questions. Now let's look at this last paragraph. And this is one that really, really got me thinking about this. And it says, and this was the last, I think it was the last paragraph of this article. It says your mark was rebuked by his membership when he was interested in adding Gonzaga. 
UConn makes more sense, but is no slam dunk. And there might be more important business to attend to. I'm going to read that first part again. Your mark was rebuked by his membership when he was interested in adding Gonzaga. Now, we all know that about a year or so ago, when the conversations about the four corner schools was going on, so was the conversations about adding UConn and potentially Gonzaga. Gonzaga obviously would be a basketball only, well, basketball and, and maybe some other Olympic sports, but they don't have a football program at Gonzaga. So they would be adding in for their basketball. Your mark wanted that. The presidents were flat out, but flat out said, no, we don't. It, it's not happening. I heard Ren Baker say at an event, they don't want, he doesn't want to add basketball only members. He's not interested in that. So uh, right now, I, th I thought that word rebuked was a strong word to be used there. So I'm going to, here's the definition of the word rebuked. Express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior or actions. That's a pretty strong word. And what my concern is here, number one, two concerns really. One is, is Brett Yormark pushing these school presidents too fast and too hard? Trying to force their hand seemingly at things that they don't approve of. That, that, can, go, that can piss people off now if you do that. I work in sales for my day job. That's something I have to guard against sometimes when you work in sales. You don't want to be too persistent, overly persistent, and push people too hard because that can just push them away. Is Brett Yormark doing that? His, his maverick mentality where he wants to go hard, go now, and accomplish all these things today, a lot of school presidents probably don't think that way. They want to be more pragmatic. They want to think things through. They want to, you know, you, you, you see what I'm saying here. Brett Yormark could be pushing too hard for things that the presidents just flat out don't want. That's kind of a concern because at some point it could cause a rift between your mark and the school presidents, which could lead to him potentially leaving as the commissioner. And I think he's done a good job so far for the most part. My other concern, kind of a segue onto the fact he's done a good job so far. Could that change by him making these moves? Now I, I'm kind of in the middle on the whole UConn thing. I see, I see the benefits of adding UConn, but I also see some downfalls to it as well. You know, if they're not able to meet their commitments, on, on the football side, that could be bad six down your six, seven, eight, nine years down the road. So it'd be kind of a risk to add them. Especially if your Mark's idea of decoupling basketball from football in the next media deal doesn't pan out. I saw Bob Thompson, former Fox, ex Fox executive tweet out about that yesterday. He, 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 it's his opinion that that's not going to be very beneficial. He doesn't think they'll get more money by decoupling the two sports. Now, that's Bob Thompson, a guy who used to negotiate these types of deals in his past career. Doesn't mean it doesn't mean Dennis or doesn't mean Bob knows it all and and doesn't mean he knows the answers. He's just giving his opinion. But at the end of the day, I I trust what he says because he's lived it. So, if if Brett can't do, say he tries to decouple them Let's say he brings UConn into the league. Come 2031, he tries to decouple the deals. It doesn't work. He doesn't get more money. Then you're stuck with an extra member of your conference that doesn't even have a football program. Maybe they haven't been able to upgrade their football program to the point where they're competitive, and it just drags the conference down. So it could end up blowing up in his face and in the conference's face. So... And I, I saw one person put out a, a comment on a tweet that said, hey, man, you know, what is there to lose? Just bring them in. There's a lot to lose. There's a lot to lose. In this landscape right now where the Power Four is separating themselves even more from everybody else, and then you've got the SEC and, and Big Ten separating themselves from the ACC and Big 12, it is absolutely imperative that these schools in the Big 12 who are already falling behind and already up against it with the house settlement coming down the pipe, it's imperative they don't lose money in any way, shape, or form. They can't even afford to let a million dollars go out the door. So this would be a huge risk if they do this. They better know, make for damn sure, and I don't cuss, curse a lot on the show, but I think it needs to be said here. They better know for damn sure 
that adding UConn adds value to this conference. Because if it doesn't, and if six years down the road, Yormark can't get his two sports decoupled from each other in the media negotiations, or he doesn't get the value from basketball that he thinks he's going to, and yet he's put all of his eggs in the basketball basket, no pun intended, it could blow up in their face. And as a fan of a Big 12 team, I'm a little bit concerned about that. But then on the other hand, you look at the other side of the coin, can they really afford to do nothing? You know, that's a concern too. So I want to hear what you think. Do you think Brett Yormark could be, as he's looking to bring in two potential teams with dogs, the Huskies and the Bulldogs in Gonzaga, is he barking up the wrong tree? Pun intended. Is he making a mistake by pushing for all these basketball schools to come into the Big 12? I want to know what you think about that. Also, I want to remind you, if you want to become a VIP member of the channel, hit the join button below and join these four people whose names are scrolling along the bottom. They are Phil Masters, Hellbilly, Tom Reinhart, and Todd Biela. Join today. Also, reminder, if you want to check out more content, Go to my website, Kuzis Corner. It's also a good way to reach out to me. If you want to shoot me an email, go to kuziscorner.com. You can reach out to me that way. There are also some great blog posts over there uh, about West Virginia sports from Shanna Rose, myself, and a few other writers over there. So go check it out, kuziscorner.com. If you want to, if you like this video, if you liked what I had to say, even if you don't agree with it, but if you were entertained by it or felt informed, hit that thumbs up button for me. It really helps that YouTube algorithm, helps pump this video out to more people. Drop the comment below. Give me your thoughts on whether or not bringing uh, UConn in is a good idea. Why for yes, in for no. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you like this channel, if you like Big 12 content, West Virginia content, or Conference Realignment content, this is the channel for you. Please subscribe and make sure your notifications are on. Don't forget, if you need a medical malpractice or personal injury attorney, check out Katz, Counter, Stone Street, and Buckner in West Virginia or Virginia. Check them out at yourlawyeryourvoice.com. Thanks for tuning into the show. Check the one out in the corner of your screen right now. If you want to watch another one, have a top shelf day and cue country roads. <laughs>